You're listening to Three Kitchens Podcast, hosted by Heather Dyer and Erin Walker. We're on a mission to inspire home cooks like us to try new recipes and make good food. Hello and happy summer from Three Kitchens Podcast. I'm Erin Walker. And I'm Heather Dyer, and we're your hosts, as you know. (laughs) And you're also going to hear from our third host that used to join us every Tuesday, Sarah Soma Syndrome. We are digging out from our archives an episode all about garlic scapes Mm -hmm. because we love them so much. And we've done some great recipes over the last few years that you can use garlic scapes in and so we thought let's dig this up because if you haven't gone back and listened to some of our older episodes I think this is a good one and we've got some new things to add to it. Tis the season. Yes. In our in our part of the world yes. garlic scapes are well my garlic failed to come out of the ground this year. Oh so I don't have any scapes but I'm told there are <laughs> scapes ready to <laughs> harvest in other gardens. My dill self-seeded in my garlic patch and so I have a forest of dill through which I have to like peek and find my garlic and there are scapes on there. They're starting. Oh good. So So you have discovered, maybe Mm. unintentionally discovered, that dill and garlic can grow together as companion plants. (laughs) They seem to be growing. Yeah, I always think like, oh no, this is going to be the thing that the reason the garlic won't come up is because all this dill jumped over or whatever, but that's good to yeah. know. Well, for now it's working. I'll let you know. My garlic didn't come up great this year. I tried planting from my own crop of garlic last year. Because I harvest my scapes off, I wonder if, okay, maybe we should back up. Yeah. The scape is the flower and the bloom on the garlic. And when you harvest that off, that means that your garlic does not go to flower. And I, I wonder if that affects oh, no. the germination of the bulbs because my garlic didn't come up great this year. And I only, I'm not sure if I planted the ones specifically that bloomed or not. Well, that's interesting. Okay, if anybody's listening, perhaps <laughs> our friend Karen from Just Grow Something podcast yeah uh she's the expert on all these things perhaps you can comment on (laughs) on social media and let us know if that has something to do with it yeah Yeah. very well could be i mean i don't remember exactly what i think i did the same last year i think i just saved some of the garlic from that had come up yeah from that year and i planted it in the fall Mm -hmm. yeah and it didn't come up at all so yeah i had terrible (laughs) success rate this this year and things that you learn so so when the garlic comes up and it looks kind of like a grass and then the center comes up and it curls around and that's where the flower bud is at the end and this is the scape so when once it curls all the way kind of around then you snip it um, down by the leaves so that the energy will go to the bulb to finish growing but you have this beautiful scape so you're not letting it open the flower is not open it's like a little cute little bulb it's kind of like a bulb shape it's a anyway. little bud on the end yeah there. bud there, and it the kind of way. it kind of it, it kind of looks like a bird's head yeah. or like a swan head like yeah. I, I think they call them swan necked yeah so that's the scape mm-hmm. and it tastes like garlic but milder like a like a just a mild garlic flavor i was gonna say it's got like all the garlicky flavor but it doesn't have that spiciness that kind of comes along with a fresh clove of garlic Mm -hmm. and fragrant too the scapes are not as fragrant you don't get that whoa garlic smell to it no we did discover some good ways of making it we made a pesto with it and we also pickled them Mm. and if you don't have time to go do this right away with your scapes because goodness knows we're all running around a little bit crazy right now Mm -hmm. Um, I did find out that you can take all these scapes off, chop them up, throw them in a mason jar and just toss them into your freezer. You can't go and pickle them after that. So if you want to pickle them, you got to do that right away. But you can go and make the pesto from this. And then it's like fresh scape garden pesto in the middle of winter. And I've been doing this now all year from my harvest last year. And I still have a few more left to go after. I do too. And you know what? I just didn't even chop mine up. I put them... Mm -hmm. 
Hmm. hole like they're all twisty and i just threw them all into a ziploc freezer bag and tossed it in the freezer and i just pulled out a couple of them the other day and chopped them up with some onions and things that i was making a spaghetti sauce and i just tossed that in there because i was digging around in the freezer you know when you're making something and you're like what have i got in the freezer <laughs> that needs to be used up and i was like well there's yeah. escapes in here <laughs> let's just <laughs> toss some of those in i also made a garlic salt by dehydrating i'm trying to remember now this was a while ago but i chopped dehydrated and then kind of mixed it with a coarse salt so now you then you would take that put it in your mortar with your pestle and kind of crush it up and put it into any soup or stew or i still have some of that from last year too mm, i think i ran through that really fast <laughs> <laughs> It's a good way to preserve mm -hmm. because it's dehydrated, so it's it's dried, which preserves it. But then also, I think that putting it with salt, mm. it just brings out that flavor. Yeah. And was it a year ago? We've got a recipe for making pesto eggs for breakfast. Oh. Mm. And if you've got this garlic scape pesto hanging around in your <laughs> fridge or freezer, oh my gosh. You just pop it into your pan as you would your butter and you fry your egg in it. You put it on some toast or if you've got sourdough bread and a little mm. sprinkle of feta cheese and chili flakes. And oh my gosh, is that ever a delicious breakfast, lunch, midnight snack? <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> that was from that was from an episode, not specifically the skate pesto, but pesto no. eggs that um, Sarah, she made us pesto eggs and Dalgona coffee. Remember when that was a trend on Instagram and people were yes. whipping up coffee? Oh, the whole breakfast is so delicious. Go and find that episode too. We'll put it in the show notes. Yeah. So good. So good. Yeah. Yeah. So in, enjoy this discussion and revival on some scape recipes. We enjoyed them a few years back in a little garden party. We had a uh, mm -hmm. evening of drinks and crostinis that I made oh, with yeah. that pesto. And maybe we'll have to do that again. Yes, please. I'm right. there. I don't have any scapes to bring, but I, but I'll be there. <laughs> if you've got That's the scapes. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll try and I'll see what I can get out of my scapes. But thankfully, I still have some frozen from last year. We can still make pesto. You bet. Mm. Excellent. Well, enjoy. I was going through the garden and weeding and stuff. And I was like, Oh my god, all these scapes have come up. I don't know what to do with these. So I am going to test out three different recipes with nice. my garlic scapes. We will see. Which means we get to test yes. it out. Yeah. <laughs> and then I can determine from that what to do with mine. Because I've got to start yours. cutting mine soon too. <laughs> and I don't have nearly as many. I just have a small patch. Right. So I've gone into chatelaine.com and I've looked up some recipes. So the first one I'm going to try is a pickled garlic scape. Mm. You know, might as well start our preserving season up right away here. Mm. So it's got garlic scapes in it, vinegar, sugar, water, salt, peppercorns, and chili peppers. It's just going to be a refrigerator pickle. You clean your garlic scapes. Um, they're going to kind of sit in a curled coil in the jar. So the picture of them looks, I think, is going to look really pretty. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> cool. uh, you combine your vinegar, sugar, water, salt, and peppercorns, boil it, dissolve your sugar, and then you just pour that hot mixture over your scapes that are in your jars. You put it, add your chilies in after that, and then you just let them sit in your fridge for two weeks. Oh, only two weeks. That's And nice. then after that, you can use them for up to a month. Nice. Some of the suggestions they have is serve them in a salad as like mm. a, as a garnish or a, in place of gherkins in a potato salad. Oh, so I think that sounds really interesting, interesting is like a, you know, I always like that pickled little bit in a potato yeah. salad. So yeah, I think I might go and try that. Okay. So I know if you're giving some to us, I know what I'm going to do oh, with mine. Mm. Awesome. I'm going to make a Caesar, um, one of those drinks. And I'm going to put oh, that in because <laughs> I always like like a pickle in my yes. Caesar and I hardly ever have Caesars. Do you guys have them often? I always forget yeah. to get the ingredients. It's like a rare thing, but when you have one, it's like yeah. so satisfying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Totally. oh, I like that idea. Maybe we can eke out some time and we can, we can okay, we are going to <laughs> eke out some time and yes. we can make Caesars with these scapes together and we It'd will so enjoy good. all the other iterations together. It'll be like totally. garlic scape central and mm -hmm. hopefully nobody else will come near us. 
Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> yeah, nobody will want to for a few days at least. People will approach us and be like, no, nope, no, nope, too funny. Soon. All right. <laughs> okay, so the next thing I'm going to try and attempt, also from Chatelaine, is a garlic scape pesto. Mm. You chop up your garlic scapes. Um, you're going to have toasted pine nuts, grated Parmesan, canola oil, lemon juice, and salt. So if anyone has listened to this podcast before, you know, I'll be substituting <laughs> lemon juice and salt. <laughs> salted lemons for the no. lemon juice and salt. No <laughs> way. All right. So I, I mean, <laughs> now that this has salted lemons in it, we know it's just going to be amazing and dro- we'll drool over it and talk about it for days. Mm. I'm tempted to make a pasta with it because they do that, but they also, you can also put it on, make something called crostini. And I believe it's like little toast slices with the pesto. And so I'm Mm. going to, I'm going to try, I think I'm going to make up some little appies because I think that would go well with our Caesars. Mm, (laughs) I think so. Creating a menu when we go here. (laughs) Yeah. I made um, scape pesto last year with mine. I have, ah. I even found my picture from Instagram. I had the scapes and olive oil, but I had walnuts because oh, yeah. that's what I happened to have on hand. Ah, Instead of pine yeah, nuts. Instead of pine nuts, but I had yeah. lemon and salt and like all the same things. Did you know about preserved I lemon? I sure did honey? not. So, so restart. Yeah. restart. And you know what Back I had? Zero. Um, <laughs> I had, and I have it written right here on my thing. We had it with grilled chicken and zoodles, zucchini noodles oh, okay so okay. uh and it was quite good and one of the hashtags that i put on here maybe this is a warning it was packs a punch so <laughs> i remember it being like woo quite intense oh, yeah. uh garlic so okay right which is good we all like garlic so it's gonna be good i think mm-hmm. this is gonna this sounds like yeah. the perfect uh date night for the three of us <laughs> <laughs> totally <laughs> All right. And the third thing uh, that I'm going to try doing, and I don't really have a recipe for this. I've just heard of this, but I feel like I can accomplish it without a recipe. You can just pick them fresh, wash them, olive, salt, and pepper, and grill them on your barbecue. And apparently they have an asparagus-like taste. Oh, interesting. It's it's asparagus-like when you, if you grill them like that. So it must totally tone down the garlic. I'm assuming it must really do something to change it up when you grill it like that. But Mm. I can't remember where I heard this or read this, but I know that at some point last year, because I had a few garlic scapes, um, I came across this suggestion on somebody's food blog. I mean, this is, we're digging back memories from a year ago. So I mean, mm-hmm. that's a, it's a mighty pile to dig through. <laughs> I like this idea. Almost any yeah. kind of, like it's, it's a sturdy enough yeah. stock that you could yeah. grill it without it kind of falling to mush. You know? Yes. And I remember just reading like, a, cook it like you would asparagus on the grill. Mm-hmm. So you want it to be hot, you want it to brown, and, and you want it to be yes. to be quick. So Yum. Mm, nice. I think I'm going to have enough to do that. Totally. It's such a crazy, versatile plant, you know, because you get mm-hmm. the scape, which you yes. trim in order to send more energy to grow the bulb. That's so you right. need to trim it anyways mm-hmm. in order to, to allow that bulb to grow better. That's right. That's really mm-hmm. important. <laughs> You've got this piece of it that you've had to trim off and it's like well what do you do with it now so it's like but that piece in itself is so great it's so tasty yeah, yeah. it's like your first hint of fresh garlic in the season yeah I love it it's yeah. kind of like an early treat that you get out of your garden yeah yeah, yeah. well an early treat I get out of my <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think you can like chop it up like you would a spring onion mm-hmm. and put that on like mm-hmm. whatever you're whatever you're making like a garnish mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. yeah I just have too much garnish now. Now it's become excessive. <laughs> like so. your chives. You yes. have a problem with like excessive small things that you only use a little bit of. <laughs> and my tarragon plant that just went yeah. boom. <laughs> oh, okay. So here's another question about scapes and chives Ooh, and sure. all that stuff. Is there any way of uh, keeping them? over a few months like can you freeze them can you dry them is there something else you I can imagine do? you could dry I should put some in the de- dehydrator and see what happens 
You could probably make like a, like any herb that you dry. I bet you could do that. Be really interesting to try out. So pickling yeah, it will make it last longer. Yeah. Pickling. That's right. Pickling wood. The pesto can be frozen. Oh, okay. That's right. Didn't you freeze it in ice cube trays, Heather? I did. And then I just popped the cubes into a Ziploc. And we pulled that out in the middle of winter, but honestly, I didn't use it all because I kind of forgot. And then it's in the back of the freezer. And I'm like, um, I would say if like two to three months, maybe in your freezer and beyond that, it's not going to be as fresh. I don't think that sounds right. right. Yeah. But you can make it last a little longer. It's all an experiment. You could try just putting the scapes in the freezer and pull them out a month or two later and see what yes. you got. It's all an experiment. And I, my friend, am your lab rat. <laughs> so experiment away. All right, guinea pigs. I'm going to get the Caesars ready. Yoo-hoo. Mark your yeah. calendars. Prepare your list. It is going to be scape date night. Don't bother brushing your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Tell your husband to sleep in the basement that night because you're just going to ooze garlic when you get home. <laughs> Hey, Erin, let's take a quick break to tell the listener all about our website. I really love that if you want to hear our story about these recipes, you can tune into us. But when you want to make them, they're just a click away. No scrolling. Just get right to it. Exactly. Usually at the end of a recipe, we give you a few ways to zhuzh it up. Either a way to serve it, way to modify it, tips for how we like to eat it. And of course, all of our episodes, including the speakeasy bonus episodes and the drink recipes, that's all on there. So visit us over at threekitchenspodcast.com. So we're back. Erin. Hello, hello. Scapes. How did they turn out? Scapes were good. I tried out three different recipes as we talked about. Um... So I'll make this like you make a compliment sandwich where you start with a good thing, you have the bad thing in the middle, and then you end on a good thing. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds good. So the first thing that I did is is I went out into the garden and I harvested off all my scapes. I think I have about 50 to 55 garlic plants. Wow. Is what I remember counting. So it's a lot nice. of garlic plants. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I did notice, however, though, when I was harvesting it out, they were starting to get a little bit, what's the word for it when your asparagus is like woody? Woody. woody. There we go. Yeah. Thank you. So it was getting a little bit woody because they were kind of hard to trim. So I think I left them on there for a little bit too long. Some cases that was a problem and some things it wasn't. So as soon as the escapes were out, I started working on the pickling of them because that was going to take two weeks to sit in the in the fridge in their brine so the brine was really easy uh cider vinegar sugar water a little bit of salt pepper and some chili pepper that I used there um so it all mixed together really easily they coiled up nicely and popped into my jars filled them up and uh just let them sit for two weeks so I mean the process was nothing uh and then we enjoyed those with Caesars (laughs) the other night I love Mm. those pickled scapes. Those were so good. Yes. And you know, they were so sweet and I didn't really remember how I made it. And so it was a lot of sugar in there. It was sugar Uh, and cider vinegar were the main uh pickling ingredients. There was only just a tablespoon of salt. Mm -hmm. Mm. You could really, once you told us, because we were like, what is, what's in here? And once you said it was the vinegar, then like, I really noticed that cider vinegar in it. Mm -hmm. Oh, it just softed it up. And oh, yeah, I really, those were really good. So did we explain what a Caesar is? I think our Canadian friends will totally understand what it is. But maybe outside of Canada, this might be something new. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. a good point, Sarah. You guys made them. I just provided yes. the scapes. So a uh, Caesar is an ounce of vodka or more if you want. And then you top it with something called Clamato juice which is a mix of tomato juice and clam juice, a little bit of clam juice. And I know it sounds awful, but it's really tasty, right? Mm -hmm. And then you usually top it with, I see now like I'm screwed up with the W word, 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 Worcestershire Worcestershire sauce (laughs) and a little bit of hot sauce. And, uh, And then you put something pickled in it that tends to be like a pickled bean or pickled asparagus. A pickled cucumber. Yeah, a pickle. You can put just a stalk of celery in it. Yep. Lots of people of celery. do celery. And yeah, then yeah. now you can put some pickled scapes. Oh. So it's very close to a Bloody Mary, but it's got that clam element to it mm-hmm. in Canada. And I think one of the important parts is salting the rim That's right. of your glass before, mm-hmm. because then you get that salt or spice with every sip as you make your way around 
Yeah, yeah. Rim. that's As you drink how it. I drink it. <laughs> Keep turning it. You just have to turn yeah. it for every sip. You know, yeah. before you guys came, I had some limes, and so I used lime juice to wet the rim, and then I made a celery seed and salt and pepper that was really good and just dipped the yeah, glasses in that I really liked that yeah, it was really good I, I liked the celery salt in that it was really mm -hmm. a great idea and they're really good if you don't want to drink them with vodka too mm -hmm. yeah they're a really tasty drink if you like a virgin drink and you want something that is a little bit special yeah, but tasty. it's you it's not usually the thing that you have like it's a rare mm. kind of drink right you don't have it very often because it's like it's quite filling right savory yeah and yeah. it's like spicy yeah and you don't want to yeah. eat too much with it it kind of stands on its own because That's it's right. got so much yeah. flavor and stuff in it it's yeah. like a cold soup is really what it's like yeah kind of is but it's delicious I know this doesn't sound good but it is a very iconic drink here. And mm -hmm. Does Clamato juice exist everywhere? No. No, it's a Canadian thing. It's a very I think. Canadian thing. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. didn't realize that. Mm -hmm. but, so that was really good. So that was delicious. Mm -hmm. The pickled scapes, definitely going to do that again. Nice. <sighs> so as I alluded to with harvesting them, they were kind of woody and um, just just not as soft and tender as you kind of want them to be, I think, for doing the grilling part, which was okay. the second way that I made it. So just like asparagus, I um, covered them in some olive oil, salt and pepper, and then threw them on the barbecue. Mm -hmm. And they smelled really good. You know, they kind of had a sweeter taste to them when they were grilled up as well. Like, mm -hmm. you know how we were talking how they were sweet in the pickle? They were mm -hmm. sweet like that too when they grilled. But um, unfortunately, they were just, a lot of it was too woody and it was very like chewy. We kind of had to attack them to eat them. It wasn't like, uh... mm, delicious. It was like... <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it wasn't pretty the kids were like these are terrible I hate these Blah. right you know and I was like yeah they're not my favorite you know and so I would say if I'm gonna try that again harvest them earlier mm -hmm. hmm. or listen maybe that's how they are when you cook them that way right like hmm. I don't know like in the past I've only ever thrown them in the food processor and made pesto right or yeah. chopped them up and put them in like I put them into a spaghetti sauce or something right right Right, and right. I do it with a stir fry, so yeah, I yeah. chop them up really small. If you're trying to eat like a full scape in some prepared form, maybe it just is that texture. Mm -hmm. Maybe it is. I was a little bit disappointed, but the flavor was really interesting. Let's talk about the third thing you made because... Okay. So the last thing that I, I attacked was this garlic scape pesto. So it had garlic scapes. I had toasted some pine nuts, uh, Parmesan. I used olive oil. And then, uh, of course, salt and lemon juice are called for. So, but a bomb. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Salted lemon. No. It's the, it's the ultimate two in one. Anytime your recipe calls for lemon and salt, it's like, why would I do both? That's just silly. I did end up adding some lemon juice on its own because the bite of the garlic was, whoa, when I first made the pesto. Like I yeah. mixed this all together. I estimated what I thought I would put in for a lemon. So I think it was a, a quarter of a lemon from the salted mm -hmm. lemon jar and only used the peel. Huh. Put that all together, blended it in the food processor. And as I tasted it at the end, I was like, good grief. So I added, oh, I think another tablespoon or so of just lemon juice, because I think the acid helps balance out that bite. Right. And then I let it sit in the fridge for three days, because I also think the longer it sits with the acid, the bite is not as strong. Right. Mm -hmm. think. Mm -hmm. Someone please correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm under the impression that the longer something like a garlic or an onion sits in an acid, it kind of calms down that spiciness. Yeah, when you pickle something, it does get mellower. Like garlic yeah. gets mellower that way. So then we made a pesto crostini. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. That is like my new favorite thing that I just want to make all the time. Ooh, that's so good. <laughs> was it mozzarella? It was mozzarella. Oh, so good. You slice up a baguette, you put olive oil on the bottom, and on the top of your slice, you put your pesto, cheese, and then you just top it with some tomatoes, mm. some mm -hmm. freshly diced tomatoes. And so I went through the effort of taking the skin off my tomatoes. I sliced it so that it was only the flesh of the tomato and kept all the seeds separate. And then I salted them a little bit. 
a few hours before you guys came over so that yeah the three of those things to get I could live on that I think I've never had it before oh and I made this all in the barbecue too and mm-hmm. that was so instead of using my oven I just kind of got my barbecue to 350 and popped it in nice those were so, yeah. good those were they addictive were and I, so yeah. garlicky now I remember because Heather gave me a ride home <laughs> after that <laughs> night and I got into the car and I go whoa my my breath mm. It smells so garlicky because I couldn't stop eating those. I may may have been the one who ate most of it. I didn't notice probably because I was eating it too. Although I didn't eat quite as much because I'm never sure how much cheese to trust. Right. Right. So I actually, I, if I were to make it, I would have put more pesto and Uh, like just a sprinkle of cheese as opposed to something. You should have said, give me more pesto unless, yes. (laughs) Second batch. This is not on demand cater to me when I come to your home. No, yes, it is. We're trying it out different ways. No, you totally. Uh, it was super good. I would. I asked. Yeah, it was I so good. It. Mm-hmm. But if I were to make it, I would probably less cheese, more garlic. Bring yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah those were those were intense. I felt like as soon as I walked inside my house, I was like. I felt the same way as you, Sarah. It was yeah. like all of a sudden my mouth like felt like the garlic just exploded yeah. in it. And I was like, which oh. I don't mind. I love garlic. I, I eat garlic raw. So that's yeah. not an issue for me. But I was just, I didn't realize that till yes. I, I felt conscious of Heather being a little bit too close to me. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, <laughs> I stink. <laughs> yeah, no, eating outside and just enjoying all of the the yum yeah that was such a nice right next to the garden under your Mm. apple trees Mm -hmm. yeah it was lovely my my yard is not anything to write home about but it sure was nice to just spend the time it's relaxing and it's beautiful Ah. and i don't know it's Mm -hmm. it's such a nice vibe going on there we could also mention that um another friend joined us yeah she's celiac yeah. And so you used, um, instead of the baguette, what was it that she had? Um, I had a rice cracker that was like a rice and nut it was made out of. So it was just the cracker that was exchanged and just the pesto, the cheese and the tomatoes again. So, mm-hmm. And she really enjoyed it too. So mm-hmm. if anybody out there yes. can't yes. eat the bread, try it with, uh, you know, some kind of gluten-free cracker of your choice and it will still be Mm -hmm. delicious so I would say yes to the pesto I would say yes to the pickle yes Mm -hmm. for sure and grilling them up eh, maybe they'd be better if you know this that and the other thing I'd try it again but it wasn't Mm -hmm. like oh wow this was super delicious I want this to be Mm -hmm. my veggie once the Mm -hmm. skates come out I'd rather yeah. put them in these two things that we can save their flavor in and really identify sure. it because wow, yum, yum. Though I will say if you chop that skate down a little more, like dice it a little mm-hmm. more, I think it'll be easier to kind of, it'll be more palatable. Yeah. I think, um, you know, in the past I've chopped them up and used them mm-hmm. as my garlic in place of using yeah. a garlic yeah. root. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just didn't know what to do with the amount that I had. Right. right. I, yeah. Yes, I love garlic, not as much as Sarah. <laughs> Maybe she could have chopped up and diced and eaten 52 garlic scapes in that time, but easily. I, <laughs> <laughs> and they kept in my fridge actually for quite a while, mm-hmm. just in a plastic bag to keep their moisture and Is that how you're supposed to store them as well? You're supposed to put them in a plastic bag because that's mm-hmm. what you did for me. Heather, yes, right? I did look that up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in the fridge. Or they'll just kind yeah. of dry out. And because we were heading out camping and I I had used some in a sauce and then I didn't have time to do anything with the rest, I threw them in a Ziploc bag in the freezer. I just wanted to be able to keep them. I don't know how they'll come back out of the freezer. Right. As a whole scape, I have no idea really what to yeah. expect of that. But oh, worst case scenario, just toss them in a blender, this... make a pesto, or you know, um, maybe I just I could put them in a dehydrator and make a because I've made garlic powder before with with the bulb. Maybe scape also makes a good powder. I don't know. Ooh, that'll be nice. Uh, that'd be yeah. something to try. Yeah, I'm curious yeah. how they will be in the freezer because I know once I tried that with asparagus and that that was a big mistake. <laughs> yeah, some vegetables don't survive the freezer no, well, so I'll, we'll have to see. Yeah, You'll have to let us know later on about that. Let's uh, wrap it up there and say that uh, 
escapes are definitely good for pesto. Definitely good for pickling. It's your new pickle, everyone. Escape is your new pickle. All right. And look at that. Garlic is like the plant that gives twice, right? Keeps on giving. Escape, and then in a (laughs) couple of months, you'll get the bulbs. Yeah. And that'll keep going through the winters. Thank you, Erin. That was really yummy. Yes. Hey, I'm happy to share. And anytime we can, we can have a garden party and eat our food. Yes, anytime. Yes. And now for the fine print. Join us over on the socials, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, and on our website at threekitchenspodcast.com. Remember, when you like, follow, subscribe, and leave a review, it helps more people find us. Thank you so much for listening. It gives you the breath as well. <laughs> well, it keeps on giving. giving. <laughs>